Okay. For the Rotary Club's four-way test, may we now call on Charter President Francis Fabi, uh, so, CP Francis. Hello. Uh, thank you. So for the Rotary, Rotary four-way, the four-way test, of the things we think, say, or do, first, is it the truth? Is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial, beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Now, let us all recite. The JCI create mission, vision, and prayer in unison and with conviction. JCI representatives, let us all recite the JCI values, prayer, mission, and vision in unison and with conviction. JCI values, we believe that faith in God gives meaning and purpose to human life, that the brotherhood of men transcends the sovereignty of nations, that economic justice can best be won by free men through free enterprise. That government should be of laws rather than of men. That Earth's great treasure lies in human personality. And that service to humanity is the best work of life. JCI Prayer We reaffirm our conviction that faith in God gives meaning and purpose to human life. The Lord guide us in all our undertakings. JCI mission to provide leadership development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change. JCI vision to be the foremost global network of young leaders. Okay, again, good evening everyone and welcome to the Peace Talks, the Philippines Comprehensive Peace Process webinar of JCI Quezon City Luna in collaboration with Rotary Club of Eisenhower. But before everything else, may we call on Area Chair for Green Think Green Projects, AC Rory Kagimbal, to acknowledge the presence of our respective guests. Hello everyone, good evening. Once again, welcome. And thank you for attending tonight's session on Peace Talks, the Philippines Comprehensive Peace Process. Uh, let us acknowledge the presence of our dear guests. We would like to acknowledge the presence of the following. From GCI Bohol Limestone, Press Sandra Litap. From GCI Fort Bonifacio Tagig City, Press Arces S. Covida. From GCI Mati, Press Pael Orangi. From JCI Noveleta Acting, Press D. Olidan. JCI Claridel del Pilar, Press Patrick Bernard El Mio. JCI Quezon City Luna, Press Catherine Santos. And JCI Quezon City Sampaguita, Press Andrea Valenzuela. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of our partner organization for tonight's activity from the Rotary Club of Eisenhower, Press Jose Ezequiel Esquera. Finally, we would also like to express our sincere gratitude to all the local chapters and other participants who are host, hosting and attending tonight and, and those who are, took time to be with us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, AC Rory, for the acknowledgement of our guests. Let's keep the ball rolling by calling on Press EJ Asigera. Sorry. The 2023 to 2024 president of Rotary Club of Eisenhower for his opening remarks. Press EJ. Good evening, everyone, and wel welcome to our online forum on peace entitled Peace Talks, the Philippines Comprehensive Peace Process. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our friends from the JCI and Rotary community, especially the members of the Rotary Club of Eisenhower and its past presidents. Uh, 
past president and assistant governor, Maria Liza Pelagio, our immediate past president, Kurt Ryan Soliman, who is also a past president of JCI Makati, and our incoming president, Francis Fabi, who is also the charter president of JCI Quezon City Luna. Also our partner club president, the hope creating president, Mira Basuel of the Rotary Club of Patron <laughs> United. Peace is one of Rotary's seven areas of focus. And we believe that peace isn't just ideal. It's something we can act actively work towards too. Tonight, we will hear from expert Director Wendell Orbeso and engage in discussions to equip ourselves with tools and strategies to promote peace in our everyday lives. Director Or Orbeso will also give us an overview of the government's efforts in the peace process. So without further ado, let us now hear the introduction of our key speaker for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Press EJ, for the short and meaningful opening remarks. Now, may I have the honor to introduce our honorable speaker. Our speaker is the Government of the Philippines Program Director that handles the centerpiece of the Philippine Comprehensive Peace Process, the meaningful implementation of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bank Samoro. He was actively involved in the negotiations of the peace agreement and now taking charge of its implementation as head of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front of Peace Process Office and the Joint Normalization Committee Secretariat of the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity. He is at the forefront of the GPH in integrating and harmonizing the support and strategy of various local and international stakeholders, accompanying the Bank Samora peace process, including the strengthening of the priority agenda on women, peace, and security, as well as the humanitarian development peace and nexus in the Mindanao peace process. He is currently completing his Global Masters of Business Administration degree from the Asian Institute of Management in Makati and the University of Western Australia in Perth. He finished a Bachelor of Laws from the University of the East College of Law in Manila, Bachelor of Arts in English with the distinction of cum laude from the Central Mindanao University, Diploma in Project Management from the De La Salle College of St. Benil, Executive Course on National Security from the National Defense College of the Philippines, and completed various courses in Japan, Singapore, Netherlands, Greece, Spain, among others, on peacemaking, peacekeeping, and peacebuilding, futures thinking, as well as on preventing and countering violent extremism. He lectures at the Barcelona International Peace Center in Spain, Philippine Public Safety Academy, National Defense College of the Philippines, Command and General Staff College, Foreign Service Institute, ASEAN member countries, and in various international training and fora on peacemaking, peacebuilding, and peacekeeping practices in the Philippines and other Asian countries, preventing and countering violent extremism and radicalism, project management, among others. Our speaker is also an advocate and lectures on transformative scenario planning processes under futures thinking, having studied the subject at Innovatens in Greece. In 2022, the Philippine Civil Service Commission had chosen him as its speaker on Kwentong Lingkod Bayani, Patriotism in Public Service. Our speaker is also a member of the Rotary Club of Eisenhower. Now, let's all welcome and give a virtual round of applause to our speaker, Direct Wendell P. Arbezo. Thank you very much. Dagan uh, salamat uh, for some acknowledgement to uh, President E.J. Esguera, to JCI Quezon City Luna, and uh, of course, uh, Rotary Club of Eisenhower. So, good evening, no? Maayong gabi eh, sa tanan. Konbanwa in Japanese. Hola. And um, so I'm speaking of <laughs> those in foreign terms because Ang topic po na ito is the favorite of at least 13 countries, 13 embassies in the Philippines. No? So, uh, kaya masaya kami na naimbitahan, masaya ako no? uh, uh, for being invited because um, this topic is very, very important uh, to the extent that countries like Japan, Australia, Canada, UK, uh, European Union, uh, 
among others in the Philippines, uh, are at the forefront of uh, promoting uh, the peace process. So, kaya nga minsan sa mga scholarships ng UK, yung Chivning, no? And uh, Australian Awards ng Australia, natatanong itong topic na to, no? And um, true enough, um, karamihan po ng mga programa nila sa Pilipinas are along the lines of the peace process, no? And lahat po ng magiging general sa Armed Forces of the Philippines required po itong korso na ito. So yung binanggit kanina na National Defense College of the Philippines, um, this is a required subject. And um, so nagtuturo po ako doon. And sa UN, uh, sa UN, I'm the official uh, lecturer na po ngayon ng Pilipinas on this topic. So feel free to ask questions on, on this one. So I lecture every year at the Barcelona International Peace Center you know, with uh, uh, the UN monitors that are about to be deployed or being deployed in various continents uh, on this particular topic. Also, the, now the official spokesperson. So yung mga sumusubaybay po sa topic na ito, uh, maybe you're familiar with me speaking on, on TV, in radio, and of course, uh, Senate investigation recently. No? So, so tayo po yung natatanong sa, sa topic na ito. Ang concern ko lang is very technical and very complex yung topic na ito. So sa National Defense College of the Philippines, for instance, at sa Foreign Service Institute, kasi required rin po ito sa foreign affairs, lahat po nang matideploy sa ibang bansa. Itong topic na ito, uh, binibigyan tayo ng at least a half day for this one. So, but um, nagtanong ako kay Press EJ Esguera kanina kung gaano kahaba. No? So I tried to limit, and usually mga 80 slides, 15 slides ito. No? And... Um, so baka may mga subject uh, areas dito na hindi ko gaano ma-explain feel free to ask in the uh, in the open forum later no so at least uh, I, I i i can provide you with an introduction of 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 this topic no ito po ay comprehensive peace process but yung focus ko is the Bangsamoro peace process in Mindanao no? so if you've heard about the barm na led ngayon ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front Marawi Basilan Sulutawi-Tawi ito po yon no uh, so I'll just ask my um uh, anyway my number naman ako diyan uh dito sa I'll, I'll share this slide with everyone um and uh so you can uh, feel free to contact me after this uh, presentation kung may mga tanong po kayo so so as the official spokesperson po on the Bangsa Moro peace process of the government of the Philippines um you can keep in touch with me po if if you have questions okay so she so uh, this presentation will cover a brief historical overview of the Bangsamoro peace process, yung CAB, yung peace agreement, comprehensive agreement the Bangsamoro na isa po ako sa nag-draft niyan uh, which was uh, negotiated in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, kung ano yung infrastructure natin, ano yung sinasabi natin political track ngayon ng peace agreement, yung normalization track, and then ano yung mekanismo ng gobyerno ngayon and uh, ano yung latest na ini-implement namin yung localizing normalization implementation. So dito pa lang medyo technical na yung terms no and um but anyway before I proceed to the Bangsamoro peace process uh, pasadahan ko lang yung limang limang aspeto ng comprehensive peace process ngayon itong number 1 so if you've heard about the Moro Islamic Liberation Front at yung Moro National Liberation Front sa Mindanao ah uh, kukumplituhin po yon ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas yung pangalawa naman this is very interesting topic and i noticed na one rotary chapter at issued a statement i think a day after yung nangyari sa Oslo Norway no so so if you have questions on this feel free no um, although yung topic ko is number 1 no ngayon so ito po yung ending ng armed conflict sa CPP and PNDF no which affects um almost all provinces no except barm sa sa Pilipinas itong programa ngayon sa CPP and PNDF Yung pangatlo naman uh, for 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 our uh, brothers and sisters in Region 6 in Western Visayas itong RPMP yung Revolutionaryong Partidong Manggagawa ng Pilipinas Revolutionary Proletariat Army Alex Bungayao Brigade no. So ang ABB medyo um siguro narinig nyo. ito po yung hit squad ng CPP and PNDF no. Um humiwalay po sila sa CPP and PA. Uh, at karamihan po sa kanila ay nasa Western Visayas. Ngayon po ay isa na silang party list, yung abang lingkod, ang kanilang congressman, si Representative Stephen Paduano. Siya po si Commander Carapali Luwalhati dati. So kinukompleto po natin yung, uh, yung peace process sa kanila. Uh, basically, mga delivery na lang of commitments. 
And then sa mga kapatid naman sa Cordillera, ito yung Cordillera Budong Administration, Cordillera People's Liberation Army sa Cordillera Administrative Region. Yung number four naman po, ito yung social healing and peace building. And dito po yung programa against violent extremists and terrorists. No? Uh, we need to heal the social fabrics like in Marawi. No? Uh, so ito po. At yung number five, meron tayong around 5 billion budget ngayon sa uh, pamana itong para sa conflict affected areas all over the country. So ito yung number five natin. And then um, we ensure din itong sa enhancement ng CSPP, Conflict Sensitive and Peace Promoting Interventions na Hindi lang po basta nagde-deliver tayo ng programa sa lahat ng conflict-affected areas, but we also ensure na yung mga dinideliver nating interventions will not create more conflicts on the ground. No? Kasi madalas po sa mga construction projects, nag-aaway kung sino yung mag implement no? yung LGU, yung mayor ba o yung gobernador. So we have that template, itong CSPP ngayon sa gobyerno ng Pilipinas no? to ensure na, na hindi mag-aaway-aaway. But nevertheless, the programs will build resilience no in 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 the communities okay so malawak pa itong 1 2 3 4 5 na topics natin uh, and um but tanong na lang mamaya no meron akong hindi ma cover um si president marcos actually he is my fourth president uh naka 13 secretaries na rin ako under four administrations uh, sinasabi niya na yung peace is more than the cessation of hostilities no hindi lang po to ang tigil putukan no it is about the creation of social order that values human dignity, improves lives, and promotes progress. So this was a statement when we were able to recover 4,000 firearms in Basilan uh, just last March 2 no, uh, uh, this year. Thank you. Next. Uh, makapal yung peace agreement, no? yung peace agreement between the government of the Philippines. Time po ito ng Aquino administration of Permahan. Um, so credit to the Aquino administration for having uh, paved the way for the peace agreement between the government of the Philippines and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. In fact, gusto namin i-highlight na yung peace agreement was signed nung ang boss namin na isang babae, si Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer. For the record, uh, because I also lecture at the UN, we always highlight that Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer is the only woman chief negotiator in the world in the history of various peace processes naka, nakapagperma ng isang peace agreement with the rebel group. No? So, so kaya ako naniniwala na malaki po talagang ambag ng mga kababaihan, lalo na sa usapin ng peace process no? uh, sa peace and conflict because our peace agreement itself was signed when the chief negotiator is a woman. Uh, that was Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer. Makapal yung peace agreement uh, pero in one slide ito po siya mayroong political aspect Ito ngayon yung governance of BARM na led by the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. No? Mag-election po sa 2025. Ngayon po ay appointed yung MILF no? uh, as part of the peace agreement. But in 2025, uh, tatakbo na rin po sila. No? Kasi ang pangarap po natin sa kanila, take note that I mentioned na yung dating Alex Bongkayaw Brigade is now a party list group. Ganon po rin po ang pangarap natin sa Moro Islamic Liberation Front for them to be a potent socio-political organization, no longer an armed organization. Yung parallel track niya, which is normalization, nandito yung security, yung decommissioning, policing, redeployment ng armed forces of the Philippines, socio-economic, confidence building, yung amnesty, transitional justice and reconciliation, uh, parallel track na ito ng political, and then monitoring. This is uh, being monitored by uh, the European Union, no, among others. And then um, my closure, di ba? So, so ang closure nito will be the national and Bangsamoro elections in 2025. Okay, so pasadahan ko lang po ito, no? And, um, okay, next slide. So ito yung photo ng signing ng peace agreement uh, during the time of former President Aquino. No? Mahaba rin po yung pinagdaanan nito. So kung narinig nyo ngayon yung Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, yung terrorist group sa Maguindanao, that was a product of the 2008 failure of the peace process no yung uh, na, na the memorandum of agreement on ancestral domain was declared unconstitutional by the supreme court so i was the one that drafted the annex on normalization po no i was very young then and became one of the youngest directors in in in, in malacañang no the office of the president so yan po yung picture na ng signing ng peace agreement. Mapikita niyo yung dati kong po si Professor Miriam Perel. Okay, next. 
napakalawak ng mekanismo na nag implement So just 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 to highlight that these are the mechanisms involved in the peace peace process. Okay. It's, and participation of at least 13 countries. No? So, so that's why I mentioned kanina that this topic, itong comprehensive peace process, is close to the heart of a lot of foreign embassies and organizations in the Philippines, including the UN. Okay, next. So just to highlight no, some milestones on the political legislative track. Okay. Yung political legislative track, yung pag-create ng Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao has 11 milestones. No? On track po tayo dyan kasi sa ngayon nasa number 9 na. Meron tayong parliament, no? uh, Bangsa Moro Transition Authority. 41 po dyan ay galing sa MILF, 39 sa government. Medyo ano lang sa mga nagtapos ng ubog na siya at sa political science kasi we're familiar na we have a presidential republican form of government. But in the BARM, in the current BARM, we have a parliamentary form of government. No? Yan po sila sa ngayon ay appointed po ng presidente ng Pilipinas. No? So that's the kind of government that they have because we are able to pass a law implementing the peace agreement which we call the Bangsamore Organic Law. Hindi po yung Bangsamore Basic Law. No? So kasi yung Yung BBL dati, hindi po yun pumasa because that was the time na nangyari yung Mamasa Pano in 2015. No? So, and uh, the Duterte administration was able to pass the Bangsamore Organic Law. So, yun po yung governance ngayon sa BARM. No? It's a parliamentary form of government that is led by the Moro Islamic Liberation Front as part of the agreement. Hanggang 2025 po. Yan po yung number 10 and that's the election of the Bangsamore government in 2025. And then the signing of the exit document. Ibig sabihin, wala na pong MILF, wala na pong mga barel pagdating po ng 2025 after the elections, regardless of the result of the election. So yun po yung pangarap ng peace agreement to provide them with a government so that they will be able to chart their own um, prosperous and political future. You know? Kasi for the longest time, they have been saying, yung mga kapatid nating Muslim, na marginalize sila. You know? That once upon a time, Philippines was, uh, you know, Muslim, you know, a group of islands and then um, malaki yung hawak ng mga Muslim, yung Islam, but uh, over the course of the history, they were marginalized and, uh, well, you know, so, so yun po, pinagbigyan po natin under the peace agreement, pero dumaan po ito sa plebisito, no? uh, tinanong po yung mga presidente dito kung okay ba sa kanila. Nagkaroon po ng plebisito at nag-expand nga po yung territory ng Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Under, no, wala pong separation dito. This is a parliamentary form of government under the presidential uh, Republican form of government natin sa Pilipinas. No? Next. Hindi po natin in yung 1987 constitution just to accommodate this one. So ito po yung profile ng mga members ng parliament ngayon sa Bangsamoro Transition Authority kung ano yung professions meron sila and where where they come from no so okay next yung normalization track ito po yung hawak ko ngayon directly merong apat na phases no ang pangarap kasi natin sa normalization kasi sinasabi ng MILF meron silang 40,000 na combatants Ang pangarap natin, kasi at the end of the day, these are all Filipinos. No? Uh, we should be able to transform them into peaceful and productive citizens of the country. Okay? So, yun po yung pangarap ng peace agreement. Kanina sa political track, mabigyan yung mga kapatid natin sa Bangsamoro ng platform of governance no? for them to be able to chart their own political and prosperous future. Okay? In accordance with their right to self-determination. Dito naman sa normalization track is to transform each combatant, their families and their communities into peaceful and productive citizens of the country. Okay, next. So sa security aspect, uh, dinidecommission natin lahat ng barrel ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Nagre-redeploy tayo sa armed forces kasi sa kaalaman po ng lahat, 60% po ng mga tropa ng armed forces of the Philippines are deployed in the Bangsamora areas. And, and yet, lagi nating sinasabi that we need to protect the territorial integrity of the Philippines in light of what's happening in the West Philippine Sea. 
Ang reality is, 60% ng mga tropa natin are in the Bangsamoro. Ang lawak ng coastal area ng Pilipinas, how can you how can you do that if we only have a little number of forces guarding the territorial integrity of the Philippines? So ang pangarap natin, may isa katuparan at may implement agad ang peace agreement so that the 60% of the forces in the Bangsamoro will be redeployed to protect you know, the territorial integrity of the Philippines. Okay? Policing, uh, may entry po ng MI at MNI left ngayon subject to the NAPOLCOM requirements. Firearms Control and Management, alam niyo po ba na bago nangyari ang gera sa Ukraine, more than 1 million loose firearms. We set the record in the world for the most number of loose firearms in the world. Okay? So kasi safe to assume na kada bahay po sa barm ay may barrel. Okay? So ganyan po karami ang barrel sa Bangsamoro, no? Uh, and we have a program to address that, yung unexploded ordnance and landmines and to disband the private armed groups in the Bangsamoro. Socioeconomic, so I mentioned kanina that we need to transform socioeconomically the combatants, their families and communities and uh, may programa po tayo sa amnesty. Actually, yung sinado po natin ngayon, because I'm also the head of the peace table for amnesty, ay ang gobyerno po ng Pilipinas ngayon will extend amnesty to these groups, no? MILF, MNLF, RPA, ABB, uh, and the CPP and PA. No? Na-concur na po ito ng House of Representatives at ng Senate. So lahat po ng miyembro ng, ng mga rebelding grupong ito, as long as covered ng amnesty proclamation yung kanilang crimes and offenses in pursuit of their political belief, the government, this government po, will extend amnesty to them. And of course, what we call the transitional justice and reconciliation of legitimate grievances of the Bangsamoro people. Kagaling ko lang din po ng Colombia and ako po ang, ang focal person ng government of the Philippines and ng Colombia on, on the peace process. So this is a very interesting topic in Colombia no, in light of what what happened no, between the FARC, yung guerrillas nila, and of course yung yung state forces, yung mga ejercito, and then yung narco, ano, uh, how narco supply the, the the insurgency in Colombia. It's also a very interesting topic, but they have a very good program on transitional justice and reconciliation, like us, supported by the government of uh, Switzerland. No? So, so yun po yung tumutulong sa TGRC natin. It's, it's the Swiss embassy in the Philippines. Next. So these are some of the mechanisms assisting. No? Uh, marami dito from the ILG, the SWD, uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, not more others. Next. So nasaan na tayo, no? just to, to cut short the year. No? Sa ngayon po, sa 40,000 combatants ng MILF, 26,132 na yun na decommission. Nakuha na rin po natin yung 4,625 weapons. Nakadisband na rin po tayo ng private armed groups. We just recently... Uh, able to get 1,599 loose firearms. Imagine itong 1,599 loose firearms at 4,346 firearms from just a small area in Basilan. Ganyan po kadami ang baril sa Bangsamoro. Pero wag po kayong matapot because um, nag, marami na po natin na tayo nakuhang baril and of course, nag-improve na yung peace and order situation. In fact, may nightlife na po sa Sulu ngayon. And I can tell you, wala na pong Abu Sayyaf ngayon sa Basilan. Okay? So, and Tawi-Tawi po is opening na po. Ang tagline na nga ng Tawi-Tawi is Tawi-Tawi to the world. That's tag Tawi-Tawi to the world. So, if you want to visit these places, um, you're talking to the right person. Just let me know. Um, my PAL flight na po sa Tawi-Tawi. So, you can visit Turtle Island, Simonol, among others. no So, uh, I'm just saying in actual terms kung ano po yung peace dividends na sinasabi at yung mga nangyayari because of our peace efforts. No? Ang, ang Sulu, may, may nightlife, pero hindi po yung idea natin na nagpa-party party or what. Yus, yus, dati, alas tres lang po. Ang alas tres lang yung mga coffee shop sa Sulu. Na Sulu has, has one of the best coffees in the, in the Philippines, yung Kahawa Sug. No? Sa ngayon po, hanggang alas noy, alas dis na po. Basilan, kami mismo, ako, nakausap ko po lahat ng abo sayap na nagbalik loob. Okay? So, wala na pong abo sayap sa Basilan. Ang tawi-tawi po is very peaceful. So, so just just to highlight to everyone, no? ito po ay kaparati lang po ng ng mga peace dividends no yung yung produkto po ng efforts natin and of course social economic development these are the figures uh, being implemented yung transitional justice and reconciliation of course yung amnesty no so and 
To inform everyone po, Barn po is the second fastest growing region in the Philippines next to Calabarzon based from the data of the Philippine Statistics Authority. So, so sila na po ang second fastest growing region in the Philippines uh, uh, for the past two years. And um, nung kasagsagan kasi namin ng negotiations, uh, we found out na ito palang mga isda sa, sa, sa Navotas, yung mga canning company, 555 Mega. No? Uh, yung dati, ang kinikredit nito, yung Zambuanga. No? But ngayon po, ang barn po ang number one sa agrofisheries. No? sa export natin ngayon ng tuna. Hindi pala Jensen, it's it's really the barn when proper attribution na came in no uh, from 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 these resources from the Department of Agriculture. Next. So this is the model that we're using. Um actually I developed this together with Australia, United Nations Development Program, Canada, the US no uh, because the US is supporting our peace efforts also Japan um European Union Canada uh, so sila po tumulong sa atin and this is the framework that we're using uh, for for the decommission combatants okay next ito po yung mapa ng Mindanao ng Barm na andyan po yung anim na kampo hindi na po natin ibabalik sa MILF uh, if you'll notice lalo na yung Abu Bakar ito yung uh, sinalakay na ERAP no na nagpalitsyon pa nga siya dito so sa April 29 po, babalikan ni Presidente, pupunta kami sa Abu Bakar. But uh, bibisitahin niya uh, kasi po ay hindi na, hindi na nga po natin ibabalik sa MILF to. Ito transform na po natin ito in peaceful and productive communities. Ang ano po natin ngayon is a progressive barm is a progressive Mindanao and a progressive Mindanao is a progressive Philippines. No? So yun po. Next. Uh, may amnesty proclamation na tayo no? and, and uh, you'll be hearing uh, a lot of these uh, members of the rebel groups kasama pa yung CPP and PA no? uh, availing of this amnesty proclamation in the next uh, few months or maybe in the, in the next two months. Okay, next. And this is the cabinet. This is the order of the president from President Duterte. Just just to give credit to all the presidents, wala pong isang presidente po dito na binibida na siya lang. Kasi yung Yung Pinoy administration po was the one instrumental for having the peace agreement signed. The Duterte administration was able to have the Bangsamoro Organic Law, the law signed, and the Marcos administration continued. No? So, nag-aaway-aaway po yung mga politiko natin, but pagdating po sa issue ng peace process, nagkakasundo po sila. No? Pagdating po sa issue ng peace, isa lang po ito sa very few issues na nagkakasundo po yung opposition at yung uh, administration. Okay, next. I'm also the head, by the way, of the Cabinet Secretariat on, on Normalization. I told you that um, I'm lecturing at Barcelona and um, uh, African countries, yung next slide, realize na yung third reason for the failure of the peace, kasi po 60% po ng peace processes sa Africa and South America fail after five years. Ano yung reason? Failure to localize, failure to have the communities, the buy-in of the communities. So we realize sa Barcelona, now, we need to come up with a model that will ensure the buy-in and the ownership of the community. Lahat po kasi talaga ng intervention, lahat kahit siguro sa aspeto natin, sa ginagawa natin, will ultimately fail kung hindi ito sustainable at walang buy-in at ownership yung community. Sa ngayon po, itong tinatawag naming localizing normalization implementation, I, I, I take a lot of lessons from the learnings in Africa from my lectures in Barcelona. Uh, so ito po yung na-develop na model ngayon ng Pilipinas um, that uh, is now being piloted in Basila. No? So, and hindi lang po ito sa BARM ha, because the administration is planning to pilot this in other areas of the Philippines also. No? So ang essence lang po dito ay para hindi mag-fail at para maging sustainable yung programa, yung local government units, yung community stakeholders, be it from the government, international or private sector, dapat may buy-in and ownership po ang community. Okay? I think this is the last slide, no? And I'll entertain um, questions uh, if you have one, not only on the Bangsamoro peace process, but on anything related to the peace process. Po. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Derek Wendell, for your
for your insightful sharing about the various concepts regarding peace talks. With this, we hope to ask a few questions to our honorable speaker. May I request everyone to kindly type in your questions in the chat box and we will read them for our speaker. So while waiting for our participants to type in their questions, um, Derek Wendell, um, may I have the honor <laughs> to give the first question. So, um, what are some of the biggest challenges or obstacles faced in achieving lasting peace in the Philippines? Yes, uh, sa level ng policy yung changes of administration. Um, kasi yung, yung ano kasi, yung authority at yung mandate kasi to negotiate peace is comes from the president. No? So, and uh, kung ang right hand mo is the, the power of the president to call out the armed forces to declare yung war and to diba, all out war, Yung sa left hand mo naman yung mandato ng presidente to negotiate peace. No? May mga instances na mas lamang yung all-out war, yung call, call for all-out war. No? Lalo na nung mga panahon na if you've heard, siguro kung naabutan ninyo yung sa Basilan, di ba, I mentioned kanina wala nang abusaya. Pero hindi po naging madali yung proseso. No? I think mga apat na na instances na may mga pinubutang ng ulo yung SF if if you if, if you can recall about that 17 members of the special forces na pugutan po yun ng ulo 10 members of the Philippine Marines no uh, na pugutan po ng ulo yung mga ganon and then there was a very strong clamor for all out war so mas ganon but we're just happy that uh, during this transition ng process na yon hams and bumps in the peace process na nanaig yung all out justice or all out peace no so yun po ngayon um i, I mentioned na wala nang abu sayap sa basilan no i, I don't know kung magre-resurrect or what but sa ngayon galing kami doon wala naman na at nakausap na nga namin so hindi po naging madali is yung problema talaga yung changes in administration kasi magkaiba po sila ng discard and priority pangalawa po ay yung limitations sa funding no uh, limitations sa funding and of course yung sunod is yung sincerity ng partido no because yung peace agreement kasi it's just a, a mere piece of paper eh no it's it's a political document but at the end of the day yung trust yung goodwill ng partido yung yung mananaig talaga no kaya sabi nga nila sa marriage nga di ba it's it's just a mere piece of contract or a paper kasi marriage is a contract but at the end of the day it's the, the trust and it's the trust no and of 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 the parties of the husband and wife to the relationship Ganon din sa peace process, sa peace agreement. no? So kahit na makailang peace agreement ka dyan, kung wala namang tiwala yung dalawang partido. No? So maraming, pat at, 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 at something unique sa Bangsamoro peace process, kasi every time na nagkakaproblema sa peace process, may isang teroristang grupong lalabas. No? Ang Abu Sayyaf po ay produkto po siya ng, ng along the way, ng failure ng, ng MNLF peace process. Yung Maute, Karamihan po sa kanila kamag anak po ng MILF sa Lanao. I was in Marawi po during the the siege, no. So at yung BIFF ngayon came from the one of it base command of the MILF. So hindi po nag naging madali ang, ang proseso na ito but because of hope, because of trust, no, of, of of the parties. So so yun po, no. So so trust and goodwill, no, of of the parties to to the process. Yun po yung nag-ensure that Well, so yun po yung tatlong gaps sa level ng policy po no yung sa sa changes in administration varying policies no and uh, uh yung trust and goodwill of course limitation and funding yun po yung para sa akin no, na three major gaps sa level ng policy 
Okay, thank you for answering my question, dear Eric Wendell. Um, there is a question, uh, rather a message here from um, RSDD Jamie of JCI Quezon City, Sampaguita. So she said, this is more of an appreciation to the process that you and the entire group does to ensure that peace is maintained despite various changes and challenges. Any particular experience that stood out to you the most that strengthened your resolve to continue what you are currently doing? Oh, of course. Um, yung ano kasi, ako kasi, wala naman talaga akong planong magtrabaho dito eh. Na, so, hindi ko nga alam yung spelling na opisina eh, yung OPAP. Kasi before kami naging OPAP, pro OPAP. Nakikita ako nang nag-apply ako dito. Ah, previously pala, writer ako ni President, isa ako sa mga writers ni President Gloria, no, sa Malacanang. Nag-end yung ano doon, nag-apply ako dito, nakita ko yung mapa ng Pilipinas. Tinanong ko, uy, makakabiyahe pala pong Pilipinas. Pero gusto ko nang umalis. But um, nangyari kasi yung 2008, nag-fail yung MOA AD. We set the record for the most number of internally displaced persons in the Philippines, in, in the world that time, 2008. One million IDPs. Naiyak mm -hmm. ako, no? When I went around, yung area ng Mama Sapano, no? Uh, uh, madalas ako dyan. So naiyak ako kasi yung mga bata, yung mga kababaihan, lalo mga elderly, sa daan yan sila natutulog kung may gulo. So doon ko na ha, sabi ko, I, I need to 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 bring about positive change or kahit contribution lang in in kahit maliit na contribution lang to the process to help these people, no? yung vulnerable natin, vulnerable sector, yung mga internally displaced people. So yun po yung naging ano talaga. Ang isang, uh, would you know, alam nyo ba na dito sa peace process, karamihan po, siguro mga 60-70% are millennials. No? So, so mabilis po yung transition. Um, well, uh, actually, isang magandang platform siya for, for international relations and uh, yung, um, yung mga international organizations. Karamihan po ng mga international organizations, UNDP, UNICEF, UNHCR, ADB, galing po sa amin, no? galing sa ranks namin. So, ang isang concern lang namin, maraming magagaling, mabilis lang ang transition. Ako, mga limang staff ko na ang pumasa sa foreign service, uh, mga consuls na rin sila. So, so, yun po, yun lang yung isang challenge dito. Maraming magagaling bata, ma matataas yung pangarap, naglahanap ng meaning, pero ang bilis ng transition namin dito. No? So, anyway, ang sa akin naman is mentorship. No? Uh, Minimentor natin yung ano dito. But kung mag-stay sila, it, 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 it depends on them. Sorry. Okay. Thank you for that um answer, Direct Wendell. Um. So uh. So I think um someone personally messaged you, Direct Wendell. Um. May I request for you to edit uh, uh, your um ano po, um your Zoom chat po. Aya, yeah, so may nagano sa akin nag-message na he is the uh, super helpful and then yung topic na ito and he is the secretary of yeah. Secretary Suharto Mangondadato. Thank Mangondadato of Desda. So we have a participant from JCI Quezon City Sampaguita as the secretary of uh, the Desda, Secretary General. Uh thank you very much. Yung wife mo niya is the governor of Maguindanao del Sur. It's a very interesting dynamics ngayon uh, between the MILF and the governors in in the in the barm no so so again uh, thank you very much for this appreciation from um Ayman no Ayman the staff of no less than the secretary general of of Testa si former governor Suharto Teng Mangodato thank you very much for for the appreciation message ka na lang po i have my number there um it will be a very interesting conversation and election next year um, because the MILF will no longer be appointed. They will also run in the 2025 elections under their own United Bangsamoro Justice Party. So so let's see now. So yun po. So yun po yung message sa akin dito. So an yung program si Press EJ Esguera, no? Uh, does the government provide to the formal rebels? So yung binanggit ko kanina, amnesty. Alam nyo naman yung amnesty. Uh, it's as if you did not commit a crime. No? Basta in pursuit of your political belief. Sa MILF po, sa ngayon, uh, pa, sa start ng decommissioning process, we provide them 100,000 pesos each. 
as transitional cash assistance. Okay? Lahat po sila individually yan, uh, receive. Pero yung Department of Social Welfare and Development. And then meron silang, yung karamihan po sa kanila, walang birth certificates. Yung iba nga, hindi alam kung kailan sila pinanganak. No? Kasi for the longest time, uh, hindi naman po sila, hindi not come out in the open, no? yung mga kapatid nating Bangsamoro. So, so yun po. Um, so, uh, and then may capacity building, um, field health, no? among others, may livelihood assistance uh, for them and of course may pabahay din po for for them for 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 the competence yan po yung programa sa MILF ngayon which the other rebel groups po yung mga programa would like to replicate them no? and uh, the european union has invested several billions uh, the japanese government uh, the the embassy of japan in the philippines has also by the billions po uh, so yung programa nila uh, for the peace process. The U.S. government, we just talked to the ambassador, uh, would like to renew also their their partnership, your their help help to us. No? So, so ganun po ka, as I mentioned, ganun po ka importante yung usapin ng peace process sa, sa mga partners natin from the international community. No? No? So thank you once more, Derek Wendell. And another question from Trish. Uh, treasurer Dada Tamundo of GCI Quezon City, Sampaguita. Uh, good evening po. Just curious sa experience nyo po, ano yung pinakamahirap na i-achieve in creating or keeping peace? Pwede pong pakwento. Yung negotiation sa Malaysia. Because um, ang na talaga, magkahiwalay na pumunta, magkahiwalay na hotel, at kung MI ka, MI, kaaway ka ng gobyerno. Ganun po yung touring. No? Because nung nag-start po ng negotiation, gusto talaga nilang humiwalay sa Pilipinas. They really want independence. Even yung MNLF, si Normi Suwari. Ganun din ang MNLF. But in 2009, I was there, April 2009 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Gusto nila ng, hindi na sila hihiwalay, but an autonomy, but a higher form of autonomy. Alam nyo po ba, yung autonomy na meron ng BARM ngayon, they are receiving 70 to 80 billion pesos every year. Okay? So ganyan po ka powerful, and then they receive a higher... Uh, share in the collection of the taxes uh, in in the barn um, and um, parliamentary form of government may minister sila ang tawag ng kanilang secretary ay, is is not a regional secretary or what but a minister you know at yung head ng barn sa Moro parliament is the chief minister chief minister po ang tawag niya so they have the fiscal autonomy yung appropriation po nila hindi naman po sila nag magano nag nag propose na yes hindi sila nag propose sa ano automatic appropriation po sila no yung 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 ira nyo nila po so so ganyan po ka ano yung itong Bangsamoro Autonomous Region most of Mindanao but again po ngayon po kasi part ng peace agreement na led by the MILF so yung mismong head ng MILF sa Alhaj Murad Ibrahim siya po yung chief minister ngayon okay pero hanggang 2025 lang po Binibigyan lang po sila ng chance na may pakita nila kasi pinagmamalaki nga nila di ba na na hindi sila nabibigyan di ba wala silang platform to really uh, to really uh, explore and to participate in meaningful governance na yung pangarap talaga nila no so ngayon sila po uh, but in 2025 um, tatakbo na rin po sila sa election kasi ang pangarap natin talaga i-transform silang lahat to kunin yung mga barrel wala na pong MILF no after the elections and hopefully Hopefully, kaya po natin ma-achieve yan. Kasi very short na po yung runway. And filing na po ng kandidasi sa October this year. No? October this year. So, so let's see po. Well, but, but, but we're hoping. We're hoping. Okay. Thank you, Derek Wendell, once more. And um, uh, while waiting for others to type in your questions, or their questions rather, uh, may I have another question, Derek Wendell? Um, in your opinion, how does the inclusion of diverse voices, especially those of women and minority groups, impact the effectiveness of peace talks in the Philippines? Ano talaga? So to, I, I will respond to that in, in two levels. Yung, yung platform for them to participate at yung impact nila. Actually, maganda yung batas eh, kasi yung batas, although MILF led ngayon, Alam nyo ba, nasa Bangsamore Organic Law? Kasi parliament sila, di ba? Parliament. 
meron pong automatic representation ito sila. Tigdadalawa po. Yung mga kababaihan, yung mga kababaihan, may automatic seats po sila sa parliament, dalawa. Yung mga kabataan, may automatic seats sila. Yung mga traditional leaders, may automatic seats sila. Yung non-Moro indigenous peoples, yung mga Tiduray, kasi marami po sa na kanila na convert sa Islam, pero merong karamihan ng relihiyon ng mga Tiduray doon, Episcopal eh, Episcopal, yung Christian no, na IP, may automatic representation. So ibig sabihin, sa batas pa lang, nilagay na doon na automatic ang representation ng mga kababaihan, kabataan, indigenous peoples, among others. Ang problem na lang natin pagdating sa implementation. No? So andyan pa rin sila, pero kung paano nila ipupush yung kanilang mga boses doon, kung pa yung kanilang agenda, yung kanilang constituency, nakadepende na sa kung gaano sila kaaktibo no at yung reception ng BARM government which is heavily MI led no malaki po talaga kasi kasi yung diversity yung diversity talaga malaki po talaga yung ambag niya sa sa meaningful convergence at conversation sa sa BARM no kasi ang MI po is more like a military organization may hierarchy siya so kung wala kang wala kang platform, wala kang representation ng iba't ibang sektor doon outside of the MILF. Mahirap po yun. Mahirap po yun. So, so ngayon po, malaki po ang, alam nyo po ba na 20% sa parliament natin ngayon ay mga kababaihan. At sila po yung isa sa pinakamatatapang doon sa ano, sa, sa, at ito, ito, um, hindi lang doon sa barn. Nakausap namin yung mga bumabaan na membro ng Abu Sayyaf. Alam niyo po ba kung sino ang pinaka-powerful na pinapaniwalaan nila na powerful sa kanilang buhay? Kanilang mga nanay. Kanilang mga nanay. So, ang problem lang kasi, wala silang access to access to economic and educational opportunities, no. So, kaya nga siguro on the surface, sasasabi natin, ah, yung pinaglalaban nila yung kanilang relihiyon or yung kanilang pagiging bangsa moro, no. Pero kung titingnan talaga natin yung mga rason bakit sila naging Abu Sayyaf ganon, wala po talaga silang access sa sa educational opportunities at economic opportunities no. So, so yun po, yung kanilang mga nana, kanilang mga nanay no, uh, really played a big role in their lives no. So kung matutulungan natin yung mga kababaihan na ma-empower, yung ganon, mabigyan ng oportunidad, malaking bagay po yun, malaking bagay. But we're just happy no na maganda yung indicators kasi sa peace processes po sinasabi sa ibang bansa na it takes 10 years to really see the gains of the peace process no sa ngayon po siguro yung indicators uh, sinasabi ng PSA na for the last 2 years the BARM is the second fastest growing region in the Philippines malayo pa pero malayo na no kasi yung kung ikumpara tayo doon sa kanila malayo pero ang bilis po ang laki po ng ano improvement Marami na rin pong umangat na graduate na sa poverty level ng mga probinsya at an. So 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 yun po. Again, babalik ako doon sa diversity kailangan po yun. Kaya ngayong inclusivity talaga is is really very important, no? It's really very important dito sa aspeto ng peace process. Okay, thank you for enlightening that area, Direct Wanda. And another question coming from our Zoom chat. Um from Press Brian Horado of GCI Cebu Mactan Channel. So, good evening, sir. I'd like to ask if meron pa po bang mga pirates sa Basilan? Kasi it is considered high-risk area sa mga barkong dumadaan sa Basilan area. Yes, uh, yun po. Uh, over the years, marami talaga. Uh, in fact, connected sa Abu Sayyaf yung karamihan sa kanila. Pero ako kasi nagpupunta kami together with my team, no? yung mga... Ma, sabi ko nga mga millennials na karamihan mga kababaihan gustong gusto nila sa Basilan kasi wala na po wala na uh, I don't know kung uh, but knock on wood kung mangyari man but uh, yung sinasabing pirates and all it's, these are all connected to the kidnappings no and um, yung extortion na nangyayari so far po wala na po kaming naririnig recently just let, correct me if I'm wrong kung may nabasa kayo pero isa rin siguro sa naging naging dahilan ito, alam niyo po ba? Kasi pag nagkukross kami ng Basilan, tawi-tawi ngayon, na sinasakyan namin yung mga assault craft ng Philippine Navy at yung mga Black Hawk nila at yung mga bagong ano nila. So isa rin po ito kasi if if you've seen that video na ang piloto ay babae, yung may hinabol silang, parang naglalaro lang ng games, no? I'm, I'm not dignifying or what, di ba? Pero 
nasa nasa Facebook ito, nag-viral ito yung piloto sa Black Hawk babae. Tapos nakita lang niya yung nagmo-move doon sa dagat na ano talaga. Gabi 'yon, gabi. Hindi ni nahabol ng mga assault craft. So nakatulong rin talaga yung modernization ng ng Philippine, yung armed forces of the Philippines, no. So yung mga air assets, yung mga naval assets po sa Sambuanga City, uh, ano po talaga, kaya na kayang habulin, kayang habulin, no. And in fact, yung sabi ko nga na nag-viral na ano, yung piloto babae. Uh, they, they're using the black hawks. Marami pong black hawks ngayon sa Sambuanga City. No. So so yun po, nakatulong. So yung peace process po, yung gains ng peace process, it's just one of the reasons, no. Yung modernization ng Armed Forces of the Philippines yung good local governance then no at at yung buy in ng community so contributed to 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 the recent gains okay so thank you although may isang ano ako no kasi baka sinasabi niyo puro magaganda yung sinasabi ko ang isang kasi ang peace process kasi addresses the vertical conflict meaning the conflict between the rebel group and the state okay and that's we call it in in peace building as vertical conflict. Alam niyo anong malaking problema namin doon ngayon? Horizontal conflict. Kung sinasabi ko yung vertical kanina na inaddress ng peace agreement, yung horizontal conflict, yung rido, rido. So if you've heard about rido, yung ubusan ng lahi. No, so so ito po yung dumami ngayon. Ito po yung dumami ngayon. So maybe you've been hearing, you've been seeing in the news na ito nagbabakbakan si MI. Madalas po it's it's really because of rido. Uh, it's 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 a horizontal conflict. It's a conflict between one family to another. Ang ginagawa po natin ngayon sa peace mechanism sa pinakita ko kanina is to protect the civilian community na hindi madadrag. No? Away ng pamilya. Pero at the end of the day kasi, ano ba yung cost ng rido? Ang cost ng rido is because there's no people instead of resorting to the judicial system, resort to their firearms. No? Kasi may baril eh. Diba? Minsan nga, although hindi namin in-encourage to, Sinasabi natin, mas okay na yung magsuntukan kasi magbarilan. Kanina, sinabi ko na safe to assume that each household in the Bangsamoro ay may baril. So pag may problema sila sa kabilang pamilya, rather than magpa-file ng case, gaganti sila. So yun yung programa natin sa Small Arms and Light, far, light, light Weapons, um, Disbandment of Private Arms. So ito po yung malaking problema ngayon that we need to address. Rido. Uh, kasi it, it's, you know, sa mga Maranao, sa Lanao, no? So 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 ito po yung ano kasi baka sabihin niyo na yung sinasabi ko lang the, the, the good things, no? But horizontal conflicts lalo na ngayon papalapit ang eleksyon, no, yung fight over resources, over land uh, disputes and of course pati honor, no? Honor yung maratabat sa kanila. So but but hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to address that uh, uh, we're, we're doing our best no together with the security sector in addressing Rido. Thank you, uh, Derek. Um, so I think this is another question coming from Press EJ Esguera of Rotary Club of Eisenhower. Um, not related to Bangsamoro. Would you care to comment on the rising tensions in the West Philippine Sea? What is the government doing to ensure that this doesn't escalate into a full-scale war? Actually, nilelecture ko rin tong topic na ito. <laughs> But uh, in my capacity, ng bangsa eh. So sa mga eskwelahan dito, yung Command and General Staff College, sa so Philippine Military Academy, Philippine National Police Academy, as a special intelligence school, no? So kami ni Sheila, yung staff ko dito, we just went there. No? Ginagawa ng gobyerno, ang, well, of course, uh, time kasi ni Pinoy, nanalo naman na tayo, no? But, but, but China, doesn't recognize yung pong clause, no? yung, mm-hmm. yung decision no? sa Hague Tribunal. Nag-aaral rin po ako sa Hague, sa Netherlands. So, <laughs> nakapunta na ako kung saan po din isisyonan yung, <laughs> yung, yung kaso natin noong 2016. No? So, I stayed at the University of Leiden in, in Hague, Netherlands. So, ang problema din kasi natin is hindi naman kasi tayo superpower. And China is a rising superpower. And China is not contented to have the status quo, no? To honor the status quo, which is yung super police talaga sa buong mundo is the U.S., no? And yung rising economy ng China, yung rising population niya, kailangan niya ng resources, no? To, to feed its 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 population. And of course, yung challenge nga niya sa... Ang kailangan talaga natin is our alliances, no? With just recently, we had the this exercise, military exercise with Japan, Uh, Australia and, and and the US no 
And medyo na-irita nga ang China ngayon because India issued a statement. India issued a statement that it will, it will be with the Philippines, no? Because uh, alam naman natin ang China at yung India ay may sarili din siyang boundary dispute, no? In fact, iba nga sa kanila yung, yung conflict nga doon. So ito lang talaga ang magagawa ng Pilipinas ngayon is to rely on our allies. No? May, lahat naman kasi may interest eh, no? Even in U.S., Uh, so yun lang talaga yung asahan natin and diplomatically talaga. So this is a foreign relations issue and uh, ang ginagawa talaga ng ano, ang ginagawa talaga ng ng Pilipinas ngayon is to show to the world, no? Kung anong nangyayari. Yung chief of staff ng AFP is my classmate in the Netherlands si General Browner. In fact, kasama siya nung <laughs> hindi yung recent eh, nung nakaraan na binomba ng ano, binomba ng tubig. Kasama siya doon eh. So 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 yun lang talaga ang magagawa din ng Pilipinas ngayon to show to the world yung pambubuli na ginawa ng China no um and of course to rely on our allies no so hopefully the mutual defense treaty will hold and ang US naman po is nag-increase ng kanyang presence although at the end of the day may mga interest po talaga may mga interest po talaga so yun po yung ano but, but again sa uh, to be uh, objective about it ang magagawa natin talaga is to really fast track the implementation of the peace agreement sa Bangsamoro. Kasi karamihan po ng tropa po natin ay nasa Bangsamoro. We need those troops to proceed to guarding our territorial integrity. No? So, so yun po yung, yung hopefully ay ma, ma, magagawa natin. No? So, kasi mahirap po na ang malaking hamon natin ay yung foreign interventions. No? Pero karamihan ng tropa natin is attending to the internal conflict, no? Nag-aaway-aaway tayo. So, so yun po, ah, uh, yun po yung nakikita ko doon. Thank you for answering question of um Press EJ. Uh, and I hope Press EJ um Derek Wendell uh, answered your question. Okay. So it's been acknowledged na po. Um another question from JCI Quezon City Luna direct Abs Garcia. So um hi sir, magandang balita na hindi sinuportahan ng BARMM yung suggestion ni past president Duterte na humiwalay ang Mindanao. Ano kaya ang dahilan bakit hindi nila ito sinuportahan? Ay of course, ako ayaw ko rin. Ako Mindanaoan ako no, just just to be clear on the record. I'm I'm from Caraga, I'm from Chargao, from Surigao. So and born and raised. Ah well, I was born in Cebu but um raised in Mindanao. Um so what for? What for? Ang ang problema kasi natin um kasi si President Duterte no. Um marami rin siguro ako personally may mga pulisiya siya na hindi ko gusto. May mga polisiya rin siya na gusto ko. But yung federal actually maganda yun eh. Yun nga yung isang ano ko doon eh. But but ka magpo-push ng secession at this particular stage after your presidency where in fact during your administration binabanner talaga niya yung federalism noon. Maganda doon eh. In fact yung nangyari sa BARM is patikim ito ng federal. What's a federal form eh? Ang tanong ko lang bakit hindi niya pinush talaga na magkatotoo during his time? And then after the after his term na he is calling for secession kakagulo lang tayo kakagulo lang tayo kung kung objective talaga na push talaga is yung federal during his time no maganda actually ang federalism for me maganda siya uh, pero yun nga hindi naman na push but yung isang isang aspeto ng federalism na nitong gains ngayon with with the barn. So ito sana yung magandang pag-intro doon sa federalism na pinapangarap eh. Pero itong secession, wala, hindi siya very destructive siya. Uh, hindi siya. Ayun, thank you uh direct Wendell just subbing for ano for our sec happy. Pero good to know. So far, sir, interesting po talaga yung mga sinishare nyo ngayon. So, another question lang po from uh, 
JCI Plaridel del Pilar from Christopher Magdoto. Good evening po. Could you share po any specific threats or challenges you faced concerning your safety and security during your involvement in peace talks and negotiations? Sa, sa negro, wala, wala naman. It's, it's very interesting because uh, a lot of the negotiations happen in Malaysia. I was actually the one that organized that secret meeting in Narita, Japan no? uh, during the Aquino administration. Yung medyo maingay dito, tapos uh, sinabihan kami na treasonous yung ginawa na nag-meet yung MILF. Ako po yung salary nun. Ako po yung nag-arrange ng meeting sa Narita, Japan. Uh, sa ground, dalawang beses na akong na-checkpoint. Sinabi ko kanina yung rido, yung 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 gaganti yung isang pamilya pag may binarel sa area ng Balabagan, Lano del Sur, then Malabang. Puro sa Lano del Sur po. No, so medyo nakakatakot din kasi ako hindi kasi ako fan ng barel, no. So hindi ako mahilig sa barel. Although may security escorts at karamihan ng colleagues ko ay may barel, ako po hindi po talaga ako naniniwala saan. So naka kung hindi ako natakot to particular instance na na-checkpoint ng mga civilian na may dalang matataas na kalibre ng barel. Doon na ako kinabahan nung after na na realize ko na muntik na ako doon na. No? So but I think it goes with the territory at yung sa Marawi siege, Marawi siege. Um kung naalala nyo, hindi pinapasok ang mga civilian but I was part of the suicide squad if, if you recall that yung na feature sa BBC yung ng rescue ng mga kababaihan uh, matatanda sa Marawi. Ako po ang head na director ng Philippine government noon, yung mga naka-blue, naka-green at naka kami po yung sinasabi ng BBC na suicide squad. Um but since I am not a Muslim, since I'm a Christian, yung bridge sa Marawi hanggang doon lang po ako. Yung tumatawid po doon sa sa nang rescue po talaga Uh, may, may criteria kasi kami kung sino lang yung makakapasok number one Muslim number two Maranao number three well versed sa Quran no? so ano ba ba Ay, apat na criteria yun ako kasi Christian so hanggang support na ako pero maraming bala na bumabagsak doon 50 caliber gano'n na kabisado ko but it goes with the territory uh, so yun yung nature ng trabaho so yun po yung challenging na aspeto pero hindi ako kinabahan nung particular <laughs> ano na yun moment na yon no after na siguro nung ano na sabi ko muntik na ako doon pero sa ngayon recently wala naman na wala naman na may nakita lang ako sa chat yung sa Makati and that's yeah that's transparency yeah sa sa West Philippine Sea yeah yun yung sinabi ko kanina na we need to show to the world the bullying that's being committed against us by by China no so And ano po, uh, itong binanggit na US and Japan, adapted po ako ng Japanese Embassy sa Pilipinas. So so I advise the Japanese Embassy on, on their efforts in the Philippines. So thank you for highlighting itong US and Japan. No? So so I'm, I was a Japanese scholar in Hiroshima and itong sinasabing sa transparency and efforts of the Japanese Embassy po. Yep, that's that's right, that's right. Thank you uh, sa nag-post it sa chat. So thank you, Derek Wendell. Uh, perhaps um, a couple more questions from the audience before we proceed. If none, I'll be dropping my last question, Derek Wendell. Um, with uh, can we uh, before I continue? Can we type in your questions uh in the chat box, please? If you have any. Okay, so perhaps I'll be having the last question, Derek Wendell. Um, for my last question, so how have previous peace agreements, such as the Bangsamoro Organic Law, contributed to or hindered the overall peace process? Ayun. Um, ang... Ako, I, I don't want everyone to be pessimistic. I just want everyone to put their hope and optimism sa ginagawa natin kasi at the end of the day, yung kung wala nang aasa or diba, for, for, for the hope and the uh, the peace process, the success of the peace process, sino pa, no? Mahirap naman kung yung mga hawks or yung mga proponents ng all-out war, no? At yung ano. So, 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 yung 
wala kasi masyadong success ang Pilipinas sa totoo lang at ibang bansa pagdating sa implementation ng peace agreement. No? I, I want I just want you to be realistic on this. Sabi ko nga kanina, 60% ng peace processes sa Africa and sa South America nagpi-fail after five years. Okay, and that's the statistics in the UN. And more often than not, very, very ano eh, uh, destructive and very violent ang maging resulta ng cycle ng violence. Take note sa Sudan, no? Nag-present ako sa UN Security Council noong 2016. Suppose sa New York. I, I presented there yung experience sa Pilipinas sa unarmed civil. Hindi nakarating yung Sudan kasi supposedly highlight sila bumalik, nag-spiral yung conflict sa Sudan no? and sa South Sudan. Hopefully hindi mangyari yun sa Pilipinas. Ang challenge ko lang sana talaga kasi I studied in Japan at ang sabi nga ng mga Hapon, sila 10% planning, 90% execution. Tayo 90% planning, 10% execution. Ibig sabihin hindi tayo kagaling pagdating sa implementation. But hopefully, itong sa Bangsamoro Organic Law, no? sa Bangsamoro Organic Law, kasi it's bearing fruits na eh. No? Uh, it's bearing fruits na second fastest growing in the region, uh, growing, second fastest growing region in the Philippines, number one in agro-fasheries, di ba? And then marami na nag-graduate, may nightlife na nga sa hulo, wala nang abo sayap, inopen na rin ng tawi-tawi, ang kanilang ano, yung hashtag tawi-tawi to the world na sila, di ba? And hopefully, we're going to succeed on this kasi otherwise alam niyo po ba na ang at hindi ito sa pananakot no kasi ang next level na po talaga talaga ng threat would not would no longer be the guerrilla groups or yung insurgents groups no so ito yung pag-aaral namin sa Netherlands ang ang next threat po talaga would be coming from the terrorist and the extremist at alam po natin na hindi po kailangan nila ng ilang libong miyembro no para maghasik ng lagin. Sa mga terorista may lone wolf na tayo eh, nag-iisa lang pasabog ng bomba ganon. Uh, or 10 or 20, ang laki po ng epekto noon. So, ang sa akin talaga is ang greatest counter narrative natin ngayon sa terrorism and extremism is an effective and efficient implementation of the peace process. So, hopefully, hopefully po magsucceed tayo sa implementation ng comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro and sa Bangsamoro organic law no and um malapit naman na 2025 yung elections no and hopefully kung ano man yung maging resulta ay irerespeto no ng mga kapatid natin sa Bangsamoro at suportahan natin no uh, suportahan natin after all yung success naman ng Bangsamoro is the success of Mindanao and the success of the the uh the the philippines the philippines no and the marcos administration is very clear that it will not waver in in the implementation of of, of the peace agreement no? sabi nga ni pangulong marcos kasi yung father po talaga niya nag-start nito itong sa bangsamoro 1976 sa tripoli libya si kadapi po uh, uh and uh, kung anong sinumulan ng kanyang tatay ay tatapusin niya under his administration so hopefully po hopefully regardless of our political beliefs no and aspirations lahat naman po tayo nangangarap ng kapayapaan no sabi ko nga kanina yung administrasyon at yung opposition nagkakasundo pagdating sa issue ng peace no nagkakasundo so fully supported po talaga ito so i'm i'm just encouraging everyone to continue supporting no our, our peace efforts in in whatever way no in what hindi naman kailangan na sa negotiations or doon sa Mindanao but um, in whatever way we can katulad po ito itong ginagawa natin ngayon uh, and kudos to JCI Quezon City Luna and the Rotary Club of Eisenhower no kasi napakaimportante po ng usapin na ito no napakaimportante po talaga ng usapin na ito maraming salamat okay so um thank you I guess that will be the last question for this question and answer portion. Um, thank you, Derek Wendell, for all the ideas you've shared. Now allow us to award the Certificate of Appreciation for our esteemed guests. So allow me to read the citation. Uh, JCI Quezon City Luna and Rotary Club of Eisenhower Certificate of Appreciation proudly presented to Director Wendell P. Orbeso for sharing his valuable knowledge and expertise as the guest speaker for Peace Talks, the Philippines' a comprehensive peace process of the JCI Quezon City Luna in collaboration with Rotary Club of Eisenhower held on the 11th day of April 2024 via Zoom. 
uh, signed by uh, Catherine B. Santos, 2024 LO President, JCI Quezon City Luna, and Jose Ezequiel Esguera of Hope Creating President of Rotary Club of Eisenhower. Uh, may request uh, Derek Wendell for a photo walk. Okay. Um, can we have another one? <laughs> okay, uh, on three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you, Derek Wendell. And before we proceed to the next part, I uh, would just like to thank once again, Derek Wendell, for the sharing of his knowledge as well as our hope to see Derek Wendell in the future projects of JCI Kazan Situlan related to this process. Okay. And then, as we move on, um, I would just like to acknowledge the presence of uh, AVP, Attorney Patrick Maglino, and RVP of Metro East, um, RVP Hands Austria. Good evening, AVP and RVP. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. And I would also like to acknowledge all the uh, some basic presidents who are present here to attend in our uh, webinar. Thank you. And now uh, for our special message, may we call on um, AVP Attorney Patrick Maglino for a special message. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you, Sec. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Sir Wendell for that very informative um, talk no, regarding the peace process, peace process of our uh, government. Most of us, actually, um, Sir Wendell, no, um, are not aware or updated regarding the peace uh, process or peace initiatives of the government. That's why tonight's um, seminar no, is very important for all of us so that we will be able to support the initiatives of the government regarding the peace efforts. No? With the Bangsamoro or the, with the different um, groups no, in our country. Okay, and um, I would like to also congratulate Prescati and uh, JCI Quezon City Luna for hosting this very wonderful topic. And um, I hope that there will be more um, informative sessions, um, topics, and trainings that uh, you will conduct in the future. Especially that um, we need such um, informative and um, very uh, wonderful uh, topics such as this one, the peace process uh, that uh, our government has been uh, um, initiated for, for uh, years already. Again, congratulations and uh, magandang gabi po sa lahat po ng SAMBC Presidents. Thank you, AVP Attorney Patrick, for that very short but meaningful special message. Now to close this evening's, oh rather, sorry. Now to close this evening's event, may we call on Press Catherine B. Santos, the 2024 Local Organization President of GCI Quezon City Luna, to give her closing remarks. And so thank you, Sec Happy. First and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone who attended our session tonight. And of course, I'd like to extend my appreciation and thanks to Derek Wendell. Sobrang informative, sir, ng topic nyo. And to be honest, uh, may mga nag-PM din sa akin na, na enjoy sila sa discussion nyo. And I'm really actually looking forward for another session of this kind of uh, topic with you po sana. Kasi this is something na not... Uh, not actively talked about, I believe, na not everyone are fully um, informed about what's happening. Kadalasan parang ang well aware of lang majority is what's happening with the West Philippine Sea and ano eh, yung, yung about doon lang eh. Pero baka yung sa Mindanao, hindi masyado din napapag-usapan. And then, uh, I'm happy to know and we're happy to know na syempre, um, mas nagiging peaceful na din sa Mindanao area baka sa susunod 
doon na ang ang bakasyon sa Tawi-Tawi kasi nga may nightlife na daw doon. So, ayan, ganda no yung mga ganong ano, mga ganong balita, sir. Thank you for sharing that. So, it has been really uh, informative to all of us. Uh, looking forward, sir, sa next session, I'll keep in touch with you po on that one. And then, ayun, thank you also to Press EJ of Rotary Club of Eisenhower for uh, for this partnership, for opening this one to, uh, to our chapter and to the JCI local organization as well. And to the, my some basic batch mates, thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting. As well as thank you, AVP Pat and RVP Hens for uh, joining our session this uh, our session tonight. Ayun lang naman din. Uh, thank you again, everyone. And actually, congratulations then to Derek Wendell kasi nga, ano, this is, has been a successful webinar. It has been really informative and insightful to all. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so thank you very much, Press Kathy Santos. May we now award the Certificate of Appreciation for our respective co-hosts. Okay. So first, allow me to read the citation, JCI Quezon City Luna and Rotary Club of Eisenhower Certificate of Appreciation. This certificate is proudly presented to for being one of the co-hosts in conducting peace talks, the Philippines' comprehensive peace process of the JCI Quezon City Luna in collaboration with Rotary Club of Eisenhower held on the 11th day of April 2024 via Zoom. Signed by Catherine B. Santos, 2024 Local Organization President of JCI Quezon City Luna and Jose Siquel Esguera, Hope Creating President of Rotary Club of Eisenhower. So to begin the awarding, May we award the Certificate of Appreciation of Co-Host for GCI Bohol Limestone. Thank you. GCI Cebu Mactan Channel. Thank you. GCI Fort Bonifacio Taguig City. Thank you. GCI Marikina Marikit. Thank you. GCI Marikina Sortidos. Thank you. GCI Bati. Thank you. JCI Noveleta Asin, thank you. JCI Plaridel del Pilar, thank you. JCI Quezon City Capital, thank you. And JCI Quezon City Sampaguita, thank you. Now, may we ask everyone to open your cameras for a quick photo op. Wait. Um... <laughs> Press Kathy. Uh, uh, ano, uh, stop share. Yes, stop share ko muna. Okay, na. stop share muna. Ako. Yes. <laughs> there are... I think there are four slides. So, four or five times. So, ayun. So, smile everyone. One, two, three, smile. Another one. One, two, three, smile. Okay, another one. One, two, three, smile. And then what? Is a pa. Then one, two, three, smile. Okay. Ayan naman na. Okay, na sec. Yeah. So thank you once again for everyone for being with us. This has been GCI Quezon City Luna along with our uh, along with Rotary Club of Eisenhower and with our co-host GCI local organizations. I, Secretary Christopher Nicole Marine, your host, will now sign off. Keep safe and healthy, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Congrats, Prescott. Oh. Thank you. Congrats, Prescott. <laughs> Uh, I believe that it's a little bit of a